Hi everyone. I thought I'd take some time and share some pictures with you of some jobs that I've had to do recently that required some somewhat unconventional work holding techniques. First up is the box end of this 32 millimeter wrench. A mechanic came up to me and asked if I could mill this a little flatter to get rid of the bevel on the ends of that 12 point box end. As far as a milling operation goes, it's pretty straightforward. The steel's not too bad to machine, and it's just a little awkward to hold because it's a forging and the sides of that wrench aren't perfectly straight. Since the edges of the wrench aren't perfectly straight, it will want to pivot on any high spots in between the vise jaw and the wrench. So to get around that, I've put a small piece of aluminum on either side of the wrench. This allows it to crush a little bit and the aluminum deforms around the wrench slightly and makes for a much stronger hold. You could also easily use copper sheet for this or even a heavy cardstock like the back of a paper notepad. This is also a really handy technique to use if you've got a lot of pieces that are similar but not exactly the same thickness. Put something in there that's a little bit crushable and you can then hold them without having pieces flying out of your vise. You can also see I've got a machinist jack underneath the end of the wrench and that's partly to support the work while I'm machining it but also to help level it to try to get that uh, end as flat as I could possibly get it. The piece of aluminum underneath the jack is just to take up a little bit of space between the bottom of the jack and the table so I could get the height right. The purpose of doing this was for some kind of low profile nut or hex flange. I'm not really sure what exactly, but it was something that he needed to take off of a car and he needed both sides of this wrench done this way. So for the second side, I jacked it up with a pair of one, two, three blocks and that was bearing against the part that I had already milled flat. The one, two, three blocks made it exceptionally easy to keep the two sides of the box end parallel and also supported the work while I was milling the other side. Keeping with the wrench theme, this is actually a small spud wrench that we put on a retirement plaque for the iron worker foreman at work. Now this is actually tapered, so there are no straight sides at all. And to get around that, I've taken a piece of aluminum round stock and just cut it in half, and I get two points of contact on the vise jaws, but then they self-center on the tapered part of the wrench. This actually allows for a really strong hold on the wrench. It's quite stiff. Uh, you can also see that I've got the two halves of the aluminum round sitting on parallels just to keep them from dropping down into the vise. And again, the wrench is supported by a machinist jack on the other end. In this particular case, I had to drill and tap a hole in the back side of this wrench that didn't go all the way through so that we could attach it to the plaque from the back side. The wrench was held at such an angle so that when it was screwed on, both the business end and the small of the tapered end would contact the wood of the plaque. Since I was drilling and tapping into what was an angled part, I went ahead and milled a small flat there just to make it a little easier on the tools. I ended up, after the fact, increasing the size of the flat there just to make sure that it sat on the wood a little more securely and didn't dig in. Unlike the other wrench, this one was really, really hard and tapping it was not easy. I did it with a bottoming tap. It's a 1032 tap and uh, I just did it by hand with the drill chuck as a guide. It all worked out fine, but the pucker factor on this one was quite high. Here's another retirement gift, actually, and this one also had a pretty high pucker factor. This one is for the water station operator foreman at the university where I work. Some of his guys brought in a water meter cover or water main cover, I'm not really sure what it is, uh, but they wanted it cut down to a thickness that was a little more doable for his retirement plaque. 
Now this one would not sit still in the jaws of the marble saw that we have at work, uh, mostly because, you know, it's just this big chunk of cast iron and, again, no flat spots to grab onto. So instead I ended up just C-clamping it to an angle plate, which was then clamped down to the table, and I put a parallel in between the vice jaw of the saw and the angle plate just to try to keep it as straight as possible. I didn't want to cut my C-clamp in half, so I actually had to cut halfway through and then turn it and cut the rest of the way. It didn't quite meet up in the middle, but I was planning on facing this off anyway. I didn't actually get any shots of me facing this, but that was pretty straightforward. After it was faced, though, I super glued it to an aluminum ring so that I could face the front side and just clean it up. I actually got a little video of this one on my phone. As you can see, concentricity is not terribly important for this job. I put the aluminum ring in the chuck first and faced it before I glued it. That way I knew that it was a nice smooth surface that was perpendicular. Obviously I also gave the part a little bit of a paint job before I put it on there. Uh, so I sandblasted it and painted it blue because, you know, water. The name of the game when you're using super glue as a work holding tool is contact. You need to have as much contact as possible just to make sure the thing's not going to fly off. And in this case, this was a relatively heavy piece of cast iron that was 7 inches in diameter. Once you're done with your cuts, you just have to heat up the parts a little bit. Uh, obviously I was trying not to burn the paint, so I concentrated on the aluminum ring. Uh, but once it's gotten heated up a little bit, the glue softens and then uh, you can just smack it with a hammer and it should come right off. I had to do a little sanding and scraping afterwards just to get the remnants of the glue off of the part, but that wasn't too much of a problem. Most of it came off on the ring. You can also see in this shot uh, one of the two tapped holes that I put in there so we could secure this to the plaque. And here it is, the finished product. I had to actually take a pretty considerable amount off of this thing because the casting was so uneven and I almost went all the way through the A. The W is pretty shallow as well. Overall, I think it'll make a pretty handsome retirement plaque and hopefully graces walls for many years to come. Who knows though, it might sit in a dusty box in an attic depending on how he feels about the time he spent at the University of Illinois. Thanks for putting up with all my vertically oriented pictures taken on the potato I use for a phone. I'm sure there are some really neat work holding techniques that you guys have used out there in the community. So if you've got something you think I might find really interesting, go ahead and email it to me. I'd love to see it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.